devil will not destroy it in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you are the one that bless individual. I pray your hand of blessing will not stop upon every one of us in Jesus' name. You have lifted our head up, O oh Lord. We are not a beggar. We are given. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, things will not turn into bad, thing, bad into for us in Jesus' name. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, all those people who are looking at us from all the resources, all enablement, we need to do it for that you give to us in Jesus' name. Boaz, air, roads. And the name of the road can never be forgotten. For that those people whom we are going to touch their life, and the, their name will never be forgotten. For that we will send, will send us to them in Jesus' name. We will not plant on the land that will not be productive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord and answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Lord, the Daddy will help me tell the brother we miss her. And the grace of the Lord will continue to be with her and the children in Jesus' name. Uh, and then I know every one of us we are tired of seeing the same face. And as the confession is coming here, I know we are preparing. By the grace of the Lord, one of our pastors have made provision for us for accommodation. And then I know the Kipas family will join us. So I told them that there's a possibility that the family make the provision for their own accommodation. But in case there's a necessity, just let me know. Uh, and then the pastor that has sent every one of us take our program home. I'll tell you there's nothing that we say on public or we do not see that is not on the program. Sometimes I use more than two or one hour, two hours on this whole program to update them. And then if you want to see, just take compare the two together tomorrow or on Sunday, you will see that every time I update them. So the pastor that has sent this, you will see 15 annual national deeper life convention. The back, uh, this person that has sent this, uh, yeah, we put it as an attachment. Continue to pray for my children that God will continue to use them in Jesus' name. Uh, yeah, yeah, the one that did this yesterday, and I did not even know that this is how they do it. So they attach each copy of which pastor that has sent about the convention, and then the place of the convention it is already there. So please let us make sure we take our program home. All other things is available there. Don't forget the Bible study tomorrow. If you post in Jesus' name. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ this morning, I just want to talk to us about come. Come. There's many times uh, we receive the message come, and there's many times we receive the message go. As a result of that, I will read from us from the book of Matthew, chapter 11. Matthew, chapter 11. I will read for us from 28. Matthew 11, I will read for us from 28 to 29. The Bible says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your soul. And this will be our portion in Jesus' name. Before a father or a mother can call a child, they come. My child, I see the way you are performing in the school. You are not performing well. I look at your assignment book. There's a lot of things that is missing. There's a lot of omission. There's a lot of things I observe. There's a lot of commendation. I mean, recommendation. Your teacher put in. 
Ajaib, come. I have a word to discuss with you. One of us that listened to the one of the pastor message, he said when he was in the scripture union, the man that was their leader always encouraged them that once a day they must read a book or proverb in order to learn. And then some of us that were used to the book of proverb, he said, Solomon, many times he called his children, he called them down. This is world, this is life. Personally, I've read it, and I've known that when you are too anxious, anxiety is there. All what you are thinking is how to become this, how to become a millionaire, how to become that, how to become the head, how to become somebody that people will know. Come, go and read the book of Rover. And then after you have read it, and God has spoken to you, go and read the book, the second book after uh, after the book of preacher. That's it. It's, 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 I mean, I do the book of the class says, go and read it. You will see that life is nothing, and they set you off your hope in heaven. That's when you are living a life that is meaningful. And that's what the Paul look at. He said, if not we believer, we have open kingdom of God, our life will have been a mis miserable one. Thank you. No matter what is you are passing through, no matter your situation, no matter how the financial is to earth, no matter how the goal is look like it's been defeated. No matter how it's mean like that my physical life is not the one I look for, my this life, my academic life is not the one I look for. My marital life, this is not the way I want it to be. That's why you have hope and you surrender everything in the kingdom of God. My dear sister, my dear brother and the Lord, welcome on board. What a rich man cannot buy. That the Bible said it would have been very difficult for him. To go through the needle for that for a camel to go through the needle. It will be very difficult for a rich man to get to the kingdom of God. That's what you are free. And that is your joy. The Sakaraya look at it and say, The joy of the Lord is my strength. Whenever you see that, there's no way, just wipe away your tears. Know that God is planning you, is taking you to place. But those people who are rich and God has blessed them, and they know God. Congratulations. Abraham was rich and he was blessed. And it was very certain that even make it to the kingdom of God than the person that was poor. Because we are believing that those people who are poor, the Bible says maybe they are poor in spirit, but they rich in the kingdom of God. The Bible was telling us that even when Lazarus gets to the kingdom of God, he still go and take a parlor, he still go and take a living room at the chest of, at the chest of Abraham. Abraham fed him here in this world. When he gets to the kingdom of God, Abraham still hosts him. So congratulations to those people who are rich. For those people who are born in spirit, do not forget what the Bible says. For you is the kingdom of God. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are not going to miss this in Jesus' name. Before the Father can say, Go. Like Jesus Christ said, Okay, now I want you to go into the world and go and preach the world. He has found more assurance in them that these people, for 33 years, have been in the ministry. I've been taking them and I've been teaching them. I've been telling them about the parable. I told them about the relationship between me and my father. I told them about the kingdom of God. At this level, yes, I can release them to go to the world and go and preach. Before he said that, he has built a confidence in himself. Do not forget, there was a time he told them, 
Let us come. Let us have a, re a retreat. A bit. Because I have been sojourning. I have been doing a lot of things. I know you are following me. I know you are supp supporting me. But at this particular time, I know you need the rest. Let us go to a separate place. To go and have a rest. Many of us may not know, may not know the reason we are having retreats. That's a part of it. And we come here on Sunday, we go for evangelism, we go for our fellowship. Yes. We pray the word of the Lord. Let's go and have a rest. Whereby we too we feed ourselves. And then we enrich ourselves more. That's a part of the reason why we have visit. So we have seen the difference between come, come my my wife. Things are not going on in the house very well. And there's a lot of things people are looking at us as the children of God. Let us sit down together. Come. Come, my husband. The way I want my life is not the way I want it. I'm saying it. This is the plan I was planning when I was young. It is unfortunately that I couldn't achieve it. Something must be wrong. That Lord that I call, that give you, as me for husband, that Lord is still there. I don't know. I know he has never changed. Come, let us discuss again. But after everything, I've been done. Okay, my wife, my husband, you cannot go and buy all those lists. Our leader told us, let us go and buy it then. Because already we have come together, we have risen together. Now it is time to go. You know, we have built that confidence. We have seen where we are coming from. We have seen where we are. Let us go now. Enjoy ourselves. You see the difference between come and go. Almighty God is going to continue to teach us in Jesus' name. And the example we can see in the book of Isaiah 55. The book of Isaiah 65. I mean Isaiah 55. The book of Isaiah 55. 1 to 3. Isaiah 55, 1 to 3. Isaiah 55, 1 to 3. We can see this kind of come and was telling us. Oh, everyone who has come you to the water, and he who has no money, come you buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine, and me without money and without price. I know your situation. I'm your God. That created you. I know what you are passing through. I know a lot of things you have in marital, maritally, financially, academically, and all other things you can mention physically. I know. But I'm calling you. I'm the healer. I can hear you. I have everything in my hand to do it. Come. And that's what the, the God was telling them. Oh, everyone who thirst. When you look at the task, you look at that, you put S onto it. That means you may be testing financially. You may be testing academically. You may be testing physically. You may be testing medicinally. You may be testing all other areas. It's put S into it. Come. Oh. And that will feed you. And that's the reason why we are encouraging every one of you. There's nothing that's too hard. That's why he was saying in that in that in that Matthew that my my load is sledding. I mean, it's very light. Come on to me. No matter what the situation may be, I'm ready to heal it. Doctor cannot do it. Recently, the doctor killed himself in New York. Somebody that's supposed to be healing. That's why you see a difference between a physical energy. And the spiritual energy. And in the book of Osea, chapter 14, the book of Osea, the book of Osea, chapter 14, the book of Osea, chapter 14, you see, 1 to 3. Israel, return unto the Lord your God. For you are funny by your iniquity. Take with you war and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all your iniquity and receive us gracefully. So we will render the calf of our lips. The things are wrong. We have, we have gone wrong. We have missed the road. 
And then as a result of missing our road, we are seeing the repercussion. We are seeing the consequence. They are not supposed to be way out it to be. What does the Bible say? Come. I'm the one that created iniquity. When I'm talking about the one that created iniquity, the devil was created by, by God. It was until the devil I mean, was arrogant, then he was sent. And then, as a result of the sending down of devil from the kingdom of God, that's why we are having a lot of iniquity. But it said, come unto me. I can, I can heal you. As such shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hand. You are our God. For in you, the fatherless find mercy. It is only the almighty God. You know those people who are called fatherless? Nobody is supporting them. Nobody is providing for them. Even the father they have is not able to take care of them financially is better for them. Many people just believe. To some of them, it's a even we can't name more than fatherless. It's not okay. The fatherless cannot save for us. And we are not going to depend upon human being. We are not going to depend upon anybody again. All what we have done by depending upon them, it is zero. Now, because I know in the beginning of my life, in the, in the, in the, I mean, when I started my life, in the middle of my life, what has brought me to this is a sin. And the Bible said, Come. I'm ready to forgive. And I'm ready to accept you back. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we shall yield to the call of God in Jesus' name. After we have yielded, do not forget what the Bible, the book of Mark said in the Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark 16. Mark 16. 15. Mark 16, 15. The book of Mark 16, 15. The book of Mark 16, 15. Now, after they are read do not forget that I told you, he called them into a separate place. That let us go and have a rest a little bit. And then after he has done all this thing, and he was ready to go, you know he has already fed them. He not told them in the chapter 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world as we are hearing the word of the lord as we are obeying the word of the lord the grace of the lord will be sufficient for us to go into the world in jesus name do not forget that as you are going to the world you are going to meet a lot of challenges what you have left in the past we invite you back what you have smoked in the past in the past we invite you back what you have drunk in the past we invite you back but do not forget the word of the law that told us in the first Timothy and said, The word of the law is for doctrine. I see doctrine that correct the book and bring us all back to where we have left. If you hold that word in your mind, and that's why you are going into the world, the word of the law will go with you in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for you in Jesus' name. In the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 20. Book of Acts, book of Acts, chapter 5. The book of Acts, chapter 5. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 20. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 20. And let us see what God told them after he has equipped them very well. 5, 20. 520. Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the war of this life. That's after he has enriched them. He has empowered them. He has fed them. And they has, even he has fed them with the comforter. Do not forget that when he was going, he promised them with the comforter. And then he set them apart about, uh, in, 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 the, in the upper house. Do not forget that one. Then after they have done all these things, he now give them the opportunity to go. My dear brother, my dear sister, as you are receiving, you are, I mean, enriching yourself in the word of the Lord. The word will have your impact in Jesus' name. What have impact of Peter in your environment, in your community? You will be Peter of your environment in Jesus' name. 
recently I was reading about a prayer that the world shall bow down for you. And I, I learned about somebody that one of our leaders pray for that the world shall bow down for him and the world bow down for him. I pray, including me, including you, the world will bow down for us in Jesus' name. Afraid, I've heard about a man. And then the man said, Walk on this morning. And it, as he walked on the morning, he said, As you walk on the morning, that's how you are going to be in dominion over the morning. And the man becomes in dominion. When I mention the name of those two people, you will know. And you will know that God is not only a God that is that is partial. He used Christians to pray for both both other religion and our own religion. And both of them succeed. And the power and the blood of Jesus, that power is still available. And the little we move with him, that's the little we are, we are seeing. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, he's setting us free totally today in Jesus' name. In the very short period I have, I will tell us the call that should not be rejected. The call that should not be rejected. The cause of rejecting the Savior call. The consequence, the consequence of accepting God's invitation. The consequence of accepting God's invitation. There are, there, are two, there, are, there are three calls. They are very, very important that we human beings we listen to. One of them, no matter. And then you know what the Bible said. You know, all of you are saying, I should come back, I should come back. But I will not come back until every year. Hear the word of the Lord. Until every single soul hear about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not coming back. So no matter what somebody says in Texas, no matter what somebody said in the Japan, no matter what somebody said in China, we the Christian, we are the one that delay in. So there's a call that is very general. And that call if you can see in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 7. The book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 7. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17. Book of Matthew, chapter 4. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent. It's a general call. I doubt it if there's anybody in this house that have never preached, repent to somebody. I doubt it. Even my little children. I remember whenever we go for evangelism, and then my, my children will say, it's either you take it, or you, they were telling somebody, forget that smoking. I don't know how they know that smoking is bad. Thank you for every one of you. The grace of the Lord will continue to help every one of us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Akimu. I appreciate you. So, Almighty God, we continue, that's a general call. Either you want it or you don't want it, I doubt it. From me, there's nobody in my circle I ever met that I've never preached the word of the Lord to. Either direct or indirect. It's either you take my CD, you take my tract, or you accept my testimony. And if you cannot do it, to do of those, there's no way we can live together. I remember when I was sleep, I was I was sleeping with a Muslim. And then the what do you call this thing? Uh, the the tobacco or something they always can. It was like this from this way. We did not say very long and very big. One of my brother came in, said, Ah, brother, you did you sleep there? But I remember there was a message I always played. I hear Telegram. That brother, if that Muslim brother, if has not listened to that message, anytime he was around, he has not listened. He always tell me this is powerful message. So this is a general call that's going to go to everybody. And the, 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 the book of the book of Romans chapter 2, verse 23. Romans, the book of Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2, verse 23. Romans 2, verse 23. Romans 2, 
verse 23. Romans 2, verse 23. The, the way I want to go is, I, I, it seems like I'm misquoting it and my time is going. The way it, the Bible told us, all have seen. This is 623 or what? Eh? No, all of us that we know that first, I misquote it. Eh? It's 323. Praise the Lord. And then the Bible was saying that all have seen, for all have seen and come short of the glory of God, including Muslim, including Christian. All have seen. And that general call is there. Either they want to accept it or not. We are preaching the word. And we are hearing it. They look in the TV, they look at our tribe, they look at our city, they look at many other things. The recent message, message for us was from India. But when we, when either they listen to it or they receive it, there's another message for every one of us which is effectual, I mean, effectual, effectual call. This kind of message that after we, we have listened to it, it changed our life. And we can see that one in the book of John, the book of John chapter 8, verse 11. Book of John chapter 8, verse 11. I've told us general call, everybody is hearing the word of the Lord in the face of those who are ready to listen to it and obey. But in the book of 8, 11, John 8, 11, John chapter 8, 11, she said, no man, Lord, and Jesus said unto her, I will read from what? When Jesus had lifted up from ten, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those you, your accusers? As no man condemn you, as he said, No man, Lord. You seek effect. The way we come, we meet together, I say, My dear brother, I don't want you to be angry again. I don't want you to be doing this again. I told us about general court. You hear the message, it doesn't have a in you. But this effective, effective, effective court, you hear it, it has a in you. In the life of this woman, it will have been killed. And that will have been the end of, of, of her life. But when he hear the word of the Lord, and God called me, what the Bible said, and then go and say no more. If he has seen, maybe we will have read it when Paul was writing his letter. Or maybe when other people are writing his letter, we will have read it. That the woman go back into sin. But that, that message has an effect in him. In the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 5. Matthew, we will see another message that has effect on the life of that particular person. Matthew chapter 5. I mean, Matthew chapter 1, verse, Matthew 1, verse 5. Matthew 1, verse 5. Matthew 1, verse 5. And, and Salom begat Boaz of Rehab. And Boaz begat Obed of fruit. And Obed begat Jesse. And do we remember? Do we remember? Who's, do, we, do we remember who Rehab was? Whoever remember who Rehab was? Rehab. That was a prostitute. Her Lord. God so loved sinner. Do you will remember that Rehab was among those people who Jesus Christ came through? A prostitute for that matter. Sarah was there. A lot of people like that was there. But when we are going to mention it, Rehab, an alert that was totally condemned, that everybody believed that he can never make it to the, to the kingdom of God, it was through him, through her, through her case. That's how we know. But what is that called? The Israelite went unto him and said, the new savior, the new savior, and he accepted them, but he told them, we know that this is has been belonging to you. We know that the kingdom of world, the kingdom of heaven belongs to you, all you Christians. But me as a sinner, at the end day, do not forget me. And Jesus Christ saved me. Who else? Did Jesus Christ did, did, I mean, did something like that too? The, 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 the thief. 
on the left side. It was at the last hour. It was bail out. God will bail us out in the name of Jesus Christ. Our effort will not be in vain in Jesus' name. And then there's, a, there, there's, a, there's a, another call, which is a technical call. I told us about the, the general call. I told us about the effective call. The effective call is called the app. When they told us, stop this thing, we stop it. And then it acts effect in our life. The technical call is the one. Like one in the Damascus course. In the, in the book of Acts, chapter 3. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, 6 to 22. I won't be able to read it for all. Everybody knows Paul. He has a good work. He was a member of Sir S- S- Henry, if I'm not mistaken. And he was so well recognized, a lawyer. And then, he, you know, he was a lawyer, and he, I mean, he, wa- he has a practical work of tent making. But God called him, and he abandoned all that work, all his knowledge, to the extent that when he was reading one of those like, epistle letters, he said, you know, I'm not asking anything from you, because I'm using my tent making to make profession for myself. Technical call. He abandoned everything, and he used the work, he had the experience, he asked in order in order, in order to carry out the work, God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Another person God called like that is Moses. You are a shepherd, but I want you to leave this shepherd, this one sheep you are leading. I want you to go and feed my sheep from, from Egypt. That's another call. So I've told all the different, the, 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 the three call now, the general call, everybody will hear the word of the Lord. I've told us about the effective call. And some of us will hear it, will have an impact in us. And the technical work, some of us will leave even the job we are doing. No offer time, no matter the amount of money they want to give to us. As far we are concerned, we will do the work of the Lord. And we are doing it. And it will, be, it will, it will have results in Jesus' name. That one let me go to. That's one let me go to Portugal. The cost of rejecting, I, I, I mean, the, co- the cost of rejecting the call. The cost of rejecting the call. The Bible may make it very clear for us in the Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew verse 11, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, 28. Matthew 11, 28. Matthew 11 11 28 Matthew 11 20, 28 and look at what the Bible the Bible says come unto me all you who labor and are every laden and I will give you rest the cost is if we reject if we reject the call of God my dear brother my dear sister we are useless the body is too much for us to carry have you, have you forgotten somebody that carried that body and said, No, God! Let this body pass over me. That was Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ cannot carry the body, and he was calling you, Come on to me. I'm carrying the body for you. I'm ready to carry the body for you. No matter what the case may be. And we get the body. The cost is on you. And that's the reason why many of us, we are standing right. Many of us we are not moving forward because we do not surrender totally. We surrender to partially. Even the partially we surrender, it's not worth it because the Bible said our righteousness is like a rag before Almighty God. So if you decide that if I say come and accept Jesus Christ, and you say no, go into your room, go and ask yourself, go and see if you are productive without Jesus Christ. Let us be sincere. Go and examine yourself, go and list it down, compare yourself with those people who have Jesus Christ, compare your life with those, I mean, the kind of the life we are talking, and the kind of the lesson we are teaching here, and the kind of everything we are saying there, that if you accept Jesus Christ, they will be this, this will be that, and if you do not accept, accept Jesus Christ, this is the result, go and this is the result, consider what we say will be the result, if you are not accepting Jesus Christ, consider what we say will be the result, if you accept Jesus Christ, compare them together, if you say you are not going to accept Jesus Christ, we will on you, I wish you good luck. I'm not going to suffer for you. I'm not 
my force is not hard. But you will bear the consequence. If I say Jesus Christ is this, and if you accept that Jesus Christ, this is the kind of thing is going, and you say no. That brother did not mind immediately I turn back. You say if no. You, you say like let me eat the flesh a little bit. Congrats. You will eat the pain. So it's better for you if I say read your Bible, read your Bible. If I say come to the Bible study, come to the Bible study. If I say be in the house fellowship, be in the house fellowship. If I say do this in the will of God, do the will of God. The cost is too heavy for you to bear, but you don't know. It's a very unfortunately, you are suffering your flesh, you are suffering your soul, you are suffering everything that's supposed to be enjoying the mercy of the Lord. All because you reject the call of God. In the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 7, verse 23. Genesis chapter 7, verse 23. And let us see those people who rejected the call what be the result of their life. Genesis 7, 23. And every living something that was destroyed. Your eyes will be destroyed. Have you seen our GS? Uh, do you know his age? And still, the man is not using glasses like I'm using glasses. <laughs> He's not the only one. Don't put your glasses on. Don't worry. <laughs> Why? He's not the only one. If I mention another name, another, somebody is the counterpart of him. Now, he too is not using glasses. Because they live or die. And they, do you know what they are following? Do you know the promise of the Lord that was after them? The Bible said, and then Moses was now they were only like 20 years. And this eye is not looking blindly at all. I'm not blaming those of you, you know I'm too amusing classes. But I'm telling you, the consciousness of being blind, the consciousness of getting blind, I know it. Somebody knows me very well, and we always speak on Ghana. He knows me through the YouTube, or this, or YouTube program. And we are talking, you know, we are talking, and you see, see every time you use glasses, Like, why are you not becoming like your GS? But it is when in Jesus' name. God will help us in Jesus' name. But what am I trying to say? Out of this thing, I am loving. If you decided not to hear the word of the Lord, if I decide not to hear the word of the Lord, the consequence of it is on me. Those people whom we say that shall not do this, that shall not mean that, that they have cancer, who is suffering with them? The only thing you can do is to visit them for 10 minutes or 5 minutes. And if you have $50, congratulations, that you are going to give to them. The maximum may be somebody like me. Maybe if, I, if I, I give with my wife, I give $20. If I not, I will just go to somewhere and go and buy something of $10. That will be valuable. But it will be the person that is on the bed, suffering for cancer. All because we tell me, this is not good, this is not good, stop it. So that's the cause. If you refuse to hear the word of the Lord, and the Bible said, and every living substance that was destroyed, which was, I mean, was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both men and cattle, and the creeping things, and four of the old things that is in our body, if we decide not to listen to the word of the Lord, not to obey the word of the Lord, not to hear the, the commandment of the Lord, all of them are going to be destroyed. Tell me, something that is dangerous, that we are saying, this is not good for me, this is not good for you, and that does not have the precaution. This is the answer of the Lord. If you are a fornicator, you are going to the, you are going to have HIV. It's not. It's not. It's not. There's nothing. There's nothing. 
And then go and look at those people who die of HIV on the bed. They pray for death before death comes. Same thing all other area. Why? Because they reject the call of the Lord. And not that they let look at the book of Genesis chapter 9, chapter 9, verse 11. Chapter 9, verse 11. Genesis 9, 11. Genesis 9, verse 11. Genesis 9, 11. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the water of food. Neither shall there any more be a flu to destroy the earth. You know what happened there? These people refuse to listen to the word of the Lord. Repent. The Bible was telling us that God was so angry, was so I mean, was so happy before He created human beings. To the extent that when He destroyed them, He destroyed them with the water. But you know, for somebody, it's like you beat this child, and you beat this child, and you say, never again will I beat my child again. And God was so having mercy, empathy, that empathy was so there to the extent that He said, never in my life again. We had destroyed world with water again. Because when you look at how they were destroyed, God has mercy upon them. So if we are telling you that my dear brother, my dear sister in the Lord, this is not the way of the Lord, this is not the commandment of the Lord, this is what God was tell, telling us to do. Go away from it. Because when the anger of the Lord comes, I don't know somebody that's ever have uh, uh, what is the teeth ache? When the anger of the Lord comes, nobody is going to suffer for you. But before then, you have life to enjoy, and you will enjoy it in Jesus' name. Another person, you know, in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 16 5. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs 16 5. Proverbs 16 5. The book of Proverbs 16. Verse 5. Proverbs 16. Verse 5. Proverbs 16. Verse 5. Proverbs 16. Verse 5. The Bible says, Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though I judge in hand, he shall not be unpunished. That's it. Something abstract. This one is not even about stealing. It's not about the which already we have told you the consequence. But in the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 23. The book of Acts chapter 12, verse 23. And see, I see the person that was so proud to the extent that the result was Acts 12, verse 23. Acts 12, verse 23. That's true. And they look at what happened. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him. Because he gave no God glory. And he was eating of worms. Just because of pride. I am, I am. I am this, I am that. I can do this, I'm able. If not because of me, you wouldn't have done this, you wouldn't have done that. And Herod did that, he practiced it. What happened to him? He warm immediately. No wonder. Kaka warm is eating some of our production. We are not established. We are not stable. Somebody that was not stable like that, do you remember him? The Bible said he was not stable. Because he went in to sleep with his father wife. And as he just of this, he was caused. So many of us, when we are telling all this sin you are committing, this one you are doing, that's why your life is not balanced. You realize it. That Almighty God is talking to you. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will come back to God as he's calling us today in Jesus' name. That one, let me go to the last one. The consequence of accept, accepting the Lord. In the book of Matthew, chapter 11, 29. Matthew, chapter 11, 29. Matthew, 11, 29. Matthew, 11, 29. And then, 
we shall see the consequence of accepting Matthew 11 29. And the Bible says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. That is rest in Jesus Christ. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you are going to find it in Jesus' name. No matter that, how low is it. You know, testimony is very easy to share. There's no testimony in failure. I don't know one person I, I was telling that. When there's a failure, there's no testimony. If most of us, including our, our daddy, including every one of us that come to share testimony, if we tell you, if we tell you what he passed through before that testimony comes, you won't stand. But because there's no testimony in failure, it's very difficult to come and share it on the pulpit. And that's what the Bible was saying. Because the person has given his life into Jesus Christ, another person has given his life into Jesus Christ, I've given his life to Jesus Christ, I can boast of this, I can boast of that. You can boast of this, you can boast of that. You can boast of this, you can boast of that. We are calling you once again, my dear brother, my dear sister in the Lord, my dear father, my dear mother in the Lord. I'm calling you my children. Come unto the Lord. Because his Lord, he said, take my yoke upon you. And you shall find rest unto your soul. In the book of Exodus 19, chapter 5. Book of Exodus 19, chapter 5. The book of Exodus. Exodus 19, chapter 5. And see, when you have yielded to the call of God, when you have obeyed the commandment of the Lord, when you do not use your wisdom, <coughs> when you do not use your understanding, when you forget that you have a father somewhere, when you forget that you have a mother somewhere, when you forget that you are you are enriched with knowledge, when you forget that you are enriched with talent, and you just depend upon the name of the Lord, look at what is going to happen in Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if you obey my fault, indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all, all people, for all the earth. You are apple of the Lord. Anybody that touch you, touch the eyes of the Lord. And by the power and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are secure in the blood of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. All past causes, all the present causes, all the future occurrences that is not glorify the name of the Lord. I agree together with Almighty God. I agree together, together with you. If you can listen to this message and you obey all what we have said on the pulpit today, all become past in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask me, I will tell you the testimony. I don't know how to preach. Ask those people who only go for a budget say they may not know. I'm very sorry to tell them today. I only put them in the front. Ask them. They may not know. But one thing about me is this. Sit me down. And let me share the testimony of my life to you. That's all. You are confused. My teacher said there's no God. I left the class. I went to another class. By the time I came back, I went to him. I said that this about this is my life. This is my life. This is my life. And this is because of the Bible. I become this. He said, I cannot answer your question. And he go to, I've never, you know, they always been saying, philosopher, that's what they do. To be sincere, I've never seen it. But at the end of the class, he wrote it boldly. In the book, he said, There's no God. I've never seen it. I've been, I've been hearing it. I've never seen it. I went back to him and I told him, this is my life, this is my life. And I'm telling you, and not the first time I'm telling you, not the second time I'm telling you. God always telling me the little you, I move with him. That's the little he's blessing me. But automatically, if I can surrender my life than this, he's going to bless me more than that. If you can surrender your life totally to God, you are going to this, you are going to see a lot of surprises in Jesus. It's possible. Just go before your prayers. And I can share you testimony. I was telling them we are going to go to go to confession. We they, we look at all the way all the road was blocked. No money in the account, no money individually. When Brasil called about three days, it was about four days ago. That was when the pastor from the North Carolina called me. He said, How many people are calling? God answer prayer. 
and that shows the little more I have faith in him the little more is answering our question and by the power of the blood of Jesus we are good minds in Jesus name. but if you can give your life into Jesus look at the John chapter 15 verse 4 for the last verse I'm going to read you, John chapter 15 verse 4 look at what the Bible says John chapter 15 verse 4 John chapter 15 verse 4 John 15 verse 4 John 15 verse 4 John 15 verse 4 abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself it is in, it is I mean except it abide in the vine no more can you accept you abide that's the word of the Lord and you are going to abide in him in Jesus name you are going to answer his call in the name of Jesus Christ and you are going to be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ there's a lot of abundant life in our head of you you are the one that is suffering yourself that is one that is punishing yourself that's the one that limits yourself that's the one that prepares yourself. And if you can totally decide today that God, I cannot do it alone, but I surrender myself unto you. Take my life. You will see a new change. Let all rise up to call upon the name of the Lord. Tell me, this is where you are coming from. This is where you are. You can still explore. I always tell people, I, one day, I'm very sorry to mention it. I was, talk, I was talking to Brother Stephen. We are talking about everybody. I, I said, Brother Stephen, hold on. Do you know G.S. is a woman man? And he is fulfilling his life. Why not us? Pastor Dada is a woman man. He is fulfilling his life. Why not us? We are praying for our, our, our daddy here. That God will continue to raise his head. But he's fulfilling his life. Why not us? to call upon the name of the Lord. I'm just making those examples to let you know that the more you surrender your life, the more you accept the call of the Lord, the more God is going to do. If there's anything insufficient in your life, if there's any insufficient in my life, it is because we do not surrender. The thief on the left side, on, the, on, that, on, that, on that left side, the only thing is surrender all and they make it to the kingdom of God. Call upon the name of the Lord and surrender Oh, to Jesus, blessed Savior. We will sing that song again. I surrender. I surrender. Close your eyes and be focused. On to Jesus, blessed Savior, I surrender all. Surrender all to the Lord. David said, Lord, search me with the such light of your word. So if there be any iniquity in me, he said, Lord, search me. He said, Thou alone know it. He said, Lord, search me. If I have any iniquity in me, Lord God is calling us. It's calling us to total purity, to wholeness. It's calling you out of that iniquity. Said now is a day of salvation. Said how can we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Surrender all to him today. 
tomorrow might be too late. You don't you are not the owner of your life. It can be taken away from you anytime. But to be with Christ is life. Is there any area of your life that have, God has not captured that is still very difficult for you to submit to the Lord? That area is like it's so special, it's so unique to you alone. But God is saying, I need it. Submit it. Humble it before me. The Lord, search me. Let every root of iniquity be uprooted. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we hear the word of God for the call. Father, we ask that as many who have not received this call, Father, open their ears, their hearts, and they will listen to the call in Jesus' name. As many, O oh God, who have received this call, for the grace to endure to the end, to follow you to the end, Father, replenish it in them in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, at the end, that this world will not speak against us on the last day. That you've called us to come. Not just to come, but to abide in you. You say you want to dwell in us. The indwelling and the feeling of the Holy Spirit. That our inner man be renewed daily, day and night. Father, I will pray that you will renew us. Renew our spirit. Fill us, O oh God. And our spirit, soul and body be found blameless before you. In Jesus' name. Let's share the grace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house.